I am Dr. E. My daily life is never consistently the same. And I spend an enormous amount of time, you know, looking at strategically what we should be doing for proposals and technology. Um, I've been a chief technologist as well, in addition to what my current title is, new business lead for the instrument systems and technology division. I was an instrument manager. Uh, before that, when I was kind of a newbie, I did attitude control systems. So I designed spacecraft systems basically to control their position and location in space. And um, that was kind of a leap from what I'd done in research. So I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, in a neighborhood called Bedford Star. Uh, I grew up in the projects. Uh, for a while, my mom was um, a single parent. You know, my dad was around, but he didn't live with us after a certain point, and they, they separated. For school, I started off at the neighborhood school, and then I went to on to middle school, and I was in a special progress program. I would say that it was a bit more geared towards math and science. So we also spent a good portion of our summers in Cambridge, Massachusetts with my mom's family. So I got a scholarship to go to the Cambridge School of West End, which is really outside of uh, Cambridge. It is in the suburbs of Massachusetts. And the school was very much focused on sort of liberal arts, the artistic side of uh, careers. So I was a little different in the sense that I liked math and science. And so I think after my first year there, they, they, they began to adjust and realize that I really was a great student in math and science. So junior year, uh, someone suggested that I go to a summer program at MIT for um, African-American students, minority students, and I did. And then that's how I ended up in the career path that I was in. At MIT, I actually chose the aerospace, the more astronautics route than the aviation route. Um, and that was kind of like a secret hidden desire and intrigued by it from a first grade event uh, when a parent brought a TV to school at my school when I was in first grade and we got to watch men go to the moon. I was actually the first PhD, first person, first African-American female to get a PhD as a civil servant at that center. I was also the first at mecha in mechanical engineering at Howard University. I also was the first African-American female Cambridge resident. Challenges actually started for me in undergrad at MIT. In terms of studying and trying to sort of play catch up in a sense, there weren't other young ladies of color in my aerospace you know, discipline and in the classes that I studied. There were a few African-American men, but by the time I got to my junior year, there was only maybe one and he was not a friend, not the friend that I, not the friends that I had studied with. All of the other friends had pulled out and gone off to other disciplines. So there was a bit of isolation, you know, and um, trying to figure out how to find the right people to study, who were accepting to study, who were inclusive. There were those challenges. I bonded with other people in the program and would have lunch with them. But ironically, they were not other engineers. Like a few of them were business majors. But, you know, those first couple of years in college, it was really hard because I was not used to studying with anybody. Nobody had the same interest. And it's the wonderful aspect that we see this change going on at our institutions where we work. There are more women, there are more women of color. Um, and uh, the institutions that we work at are more supportive with like Society of Women Engineers. There were challenges even at my NASA facility. There were challenges for lots of us. And we joined together and we actually 
filed a class action suit against NASA. And we weren't the first center to do it. <laughs> we were at the second, but the way that my center responded was very encouraging. Um, we were able to get, many of us start to get promoted. And I actually encourage people of all walks of life, disciplines, ages that, you know, it's important to be engaged in the STEM disciplines. It's important to have uh, some idea about science and technology. You know, you really can't survive in this world with some, some understanding of how to utilize technology. I don't see how as a technical minded person, you are going to be successful in a technical field without knowing some kind of coding. Coding is key, just like the math and science skills that we talked about. Now coding is one of those key skills that students need to know. I really encourage them to not just utilize, but create technology.